Hey everybody, this is Chris from PC Addicts. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to install Debian 7.4 Wheezy. And it's just going to be the base install. No GUI, no pretty interface or anything like that. We're just going to have a really simple um, Debian server set up and we'll install things as needed. So I'm going to be setting it up here within my virtual environment. Now all these you see here on the left, go ahead and ignore those. They're just um, previous VMs I've set up for previous videos, also current video series that I'm doing, um, but they're all on a an internal network. What I'm gonna be doing with this uh, Debian server is I'm just gonna set it up on bridged so that way it can be on the same network as this Windows 8 machine as well as the Mac that I'm recording this on. So we'll just go ahead and start setting it up. I'm gonna go ahead and click new, name, I'm just gonna name it, um, I don't know, Debian web server. So we'll just go ahead and already pick Linux, already picked Debian 64 bit, which is the uh, one I had downloaded and hit next. I'm gonna go ahead and since I got 32 gigs of RAM available on this thing, we'll just go ahead and give it one gig. Hit next, virtual VDI, dynamic. Uh, eight gigs is probably fine. I know it's pointing to the right drive. And here we go, we'll go ahead and bring it up to the top here. All right. So there's a few things I like to set up before firing it up for the first time. We'll go ahead and go into settings um, and system. Let's go to processor. You know what? We'll probably be fine with one CPU. Hey, let's just go ahead and bump it up to two. two. Uh, display is fine. We don't care about all that. Storage, we'll go ahead and um, attach our ISO. So that way when we start it up, it'll boot off that ISO. Audio, we don't need us taking audio. It's a VM, as a server. Network, we want to switch it from default net to bridged. Uh, let's see, serial, no serial, USB, controllers, we don't need any of that. We should be good. We're going to go ahead and start it up. All right, the install is really simple. I'm going to fly through this. You can pause it, rewind it. I don't care, whatever. Let's just zoom through this. English, United States, American English. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and name it. Let's name it. We'll just leave it Deb. Let's leave, let's name it Debian Web Server, if I can spell. And continue domain name. Now you can leave this blank. I'm gonna go ahead and just put in PC Dash Addicts dot internal. Even though I don't really have a domain set up like that, I do, but it's on the internal network. But that's another story. It doesn't matter. I'll just give it something. Root password. Type it again, and full name for the new user. Now this is a non-root user. It's going to be my account, Chris Davis, and I like my usernames as C Davis. The password for that is going to be that. I'm not going to say it, but I type it. All right, so we're going to be picking our time zone, which is central here. Okay, for the partitioning, I'm just going to use guided, use entire disk. Basically, going to be choosing all the defaults, all files in one partition is fine. Uh, finish parti partitioning, right? Yes. Error over. All right. All right. United States. I'll just use a default. I can pick probably Chicago, but let's just pick the default here. No, I don't have a proxy. We'll just hit enter. All right. Uh, do you want to participate in the package usage survey? Nope. And all right. So now we're at the part where you can select different software to have installed during the install here. Um, I'm going to uncheck everything because I want a very clean, basic, lightweight server. And then we'll go ahead and continue. Do we want to install Grub Bootloader on the master boot record? Yes, enter. All right, installation's done. What I'm saying is um, if you have a CD in your physical drive or you know want to attach, go ahead and detach it or remove it. And it's already been removed, so we'll go ahead and just continue and let this thing reboot. Should only take just a second here. All right, that was it. It was pretty quick and simple. There's a few other things we need to do since this is a server and um, I am a big fan of making sure we don't leave it on DHCP for any servers. We want to statically assign a server. Let's go ahead and do that now. Now by default, what I like to do is log in as my normal non-root user. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in as C Davis. So now that we're logged in, um, we are unable to do a lot of things that we need to do. We need to switch the user account that we're logged into um, to our root account. Now, of course, if you're an Ubuntu fan or you know a little bit more about Ubuntu, or actually I think there's other distros these days. I'm not too up on the distros these days, but 
Um, I think there's other ones out there that utilize a sudo command, um, which allows you to run a certain command on the fly. Um, right now, by default, since I unselected everything in those software options, we don't have sudo installed. So what we're going to do is just use the good old fashioned switch user, su root, because we want to switch the user to root, and we'll go ahead and put the root password in. Now we're logged in as root. So what I want to do is edit the interfaces file and I want to configure the interface so that it is statically assigned. Now for text editors, I like, I'm a big fan of VI. I'm not a big fan, but um, I, I learned it a while back and I remember enough commands to get me by. So I'm going to go ahead and use VI or it's now it's VIM. VI is just a shortcut to VIM. Um, we're going to go ahead and launch the Etsy network interfaces file and we're going to come down here I'm going to go ahead and just comment this one out and you know you'll probably find other people that do things a little bit differently um, I'm going to go ahead and insert AUTO auto ETH oops ETH 0 and we'll go ahead and put iFace ETH 0 INET and then we'll need to change the DHCP to static so we'll go ahead and if you don't know how to use VI um, check out the blog post. I'll have some links in there, sites that'll help you get started with VI. But uh, all right, so we need to go ahead and add in there static. And then I'll just go ahead and tab over a little bit, type address. And this is the address I want to give this machine 10.2.0. Uh, Let's do 170. And then the network mask, net mask 250. Oops, it's going to be class C, so it's going to be 255. Two, my keyboard is all funky right now because I have it up on a different desk so I can have the microphone in front of me. And then gateway is going to be 10.2.0.1. And we're we'll going to escape. We'll do colon right quit. So we need to restart the interfaces now. So we need to do forward slash Etsy, forward slash initd, dot D, forward slash networking. And we need to do restart. All right, should we restart it? If we do if config, we should have a 10.2.0.70 ping google.com all right we're good we can ping google so next up is let's go ahead and clear our screen we need to install open ssh because i want to remotely manage this server i don't want to have to remote into my windows machine and then open up the uh, virtual machine window here i want to just remotely do it from either my Mac at some point or maybe at work I need to remote in real quick and you know, I need to do something with it now this is pretty darn simple as well but the first command we want to run is apt dash get space update and that's gonna update all the packages here then we need let's try apt dot get space upgrade see if there's anything needs to be upgraded nope we're good and now apt dash get install uh, open SSH dash server enter do you want to continue it found it yep we'll go ahead and let this install and I will have these commands on the blog post so if I'm typing them too fast you don't feel like pausing and rewinding all that stuff just go to the blog post and you can see them all there so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and just exit out and uh, clear the screen and this um, let's go ahead and exit one more time so we're back at the login server at the console um, so at this point, we can go ahead and remotely connect to this thing using uh, PuTTY. All we got to do is give it the IP address, 10.2.0.170, connect, and it's just looking at the security key. We go ahead and accept that and type in our username, which the one I created was C. Davis, and the password, and we're in. Uh, PWD. And we can also switch user to root if we wanted to. So now we can remotely manage this Debian box from Windows 8. So if you wanted to manage it from your OS 10 machine, it's very simple. You can just open up terminal and type SSH and then the IP address 10.2.0.170. It'll ask for the key, you say yes, and it asks for the password. And I'm in. Same thing, I can switch to root if I need to. And I can exit out of root and I can exit out of that server and I'm back at my command prompt here. So I got a question for you guys or girls out there. Have you used Linux before? And if so, what distros have you used? Do you remember? All right, everybody, talk to you later.